Looking ahead to the trading week beginning May 22nd, the first we're going to look at is there any update, any sort of positive movement on the debt ceiling news because there was a debt ceiling news conference planned for Saturday late afternoon, early evening. On Friday of last week, we had a little bit of a break in the negotiations. Now, we've seen this before. They're likely going to get together again, but we don't know when and we don't know where, and we don't know if this Saturday press conference is going to happen. It had been scheduled for Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. I don't know if it was just going to be a progress report, but it was going to be important because you saw on Friday the way that things shifted once the talks on Friday broke down and they placed negotiations in sort of a pause setting. So we're gonna keep an eye on debt ceiling news in general, early next week, Treasury Secretary Yellen said early June is going to be when this default is going to become a reality for the United States. We have a shifting view in rates that really kind of had an exclamation point put on it last week. So we're going to be watching that pretty closely. The two year was actually up 29 basis points last week. We haven't seen that kind of volatility in yields in a few weeks. Five year was up 27, 10 year was up 22, 30 year was up 16. And this is affecting the dollar, which finished in aggregate on a second straight week higher for a total move of about 1.7%. This is going to affect commodities in general with crude and copper down four or five weeks now. Gold and silver don't bolt down two weeks in a row, although they had good Fridays. So when you look at what's going on in the rate picture, you need to look at it in sort of a, a veil or sort of through glasses of what it does to the US dollar and how that affects commodities. Data and earnings next week, Earnings are slowing down, but still some pretty important businesses reporting next week, including NVIDIA Corp, Palo Alto Networks, Costco, Lowe's, Workday, AutoZone, Snowflake, Agilent Technology, Zoom, Dollar Tree, Ulta Beauty, Best Buy, Nordstrom's, Dick Sporting Goods, Burlington Stores, Booz Allen Hamilton, Toll, Toll Brothers, Kohl's. Uh, all, in all, we have a grand total of 74 companies with market caps over 500 million reporting. In terms of data, Sunday night we get Japanese machine orders, Monday we get EU consumer confidence, Tuesday the start of the April flash PMIs, we get Germany's, the UK and the US. Wednesday we get UK inflation data and the FOMC minutes. Those minutes will also be very big. In light of Thursday, we get final Q1 GDP in Germany and the second estimate of Q1 GDP in the US. And then Friday, US durable goods and PCE price data for April. That's after we get those FOMC minutes. We're also gonna get Chinese industrial profits that evening.